so now he starts opening up his life to me. He says, listen, I'm um, <clears throat> living with this girl and her sister is a drug addict. She's a, a prostitute. She used heroin. She sold her body to pay for her habit and she just overdosed and died. She has two kids. He said, now we're going to inherit these two kids. He says, I don't even know how we're going to pay for the funeral. I feel like the Lord says, Jim, write the check. I said, well, hey, how much do you need? And he tells me, I go in the other room, wrote the check. So now he's really crying. He says, why are you doing this? I said, man, I'm just, I'm just letting you know how God feels about you. And so we exchange phone numbers. And so um, after he leaves, I'm like, um, I told Mary, I'm like, I feel like I'm supposed to go to this funeral. And so I text him, I'm like, hey, bro, I feel like I'm supposed to come to the funeral just to support you. Oh, that'd be great. So he gives me an instruction. And so in our movement, we don't dress up a whole lot. You'll, you'll never see me this dressed up in my church. And so we typically have one suit with two ties. We got the funeral tie and the wedding tie. And so I show up there with my funeral tie on. And uh, this, may, this may shock you, but I'm actually not as tough as I look. I know I look like a tough guy. I know like I, like I hang around all that stuff. But uh, I'm actually not. I'm actually pretty soft. And so I go in there, and it is kind of a tough-looking environment. It's like the former baby mamas and the former baby daddies. They're yelling at each other, and it looks like there's about to be a fist fight. And so, of course, what do I do in a fist fight? Where can I hide? Right? And so that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> So I'm slinking down in the back because, I mean, typically if there's going to be a fight, my best thing is probably headbutts to the fist. I'm just going to wear down their knuckles with my face. And so I'm slinking down there and I'm like, oh man, this is pretty rough here. And um, this guy comes up to me and says, hey, are you the guy that helped pay for the funeral? I said, like, yes, sir. I was like, I'm like, this is it. Receive my spirit. I like, Lord, take care of the kids, you know. And uh, it's really, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking anything brave. And I was like, yes, sir. And... Um, his eyes well up with tears. He was tough. He had like tattoos on his face and everything. And he's like, um, his, his eyes well up with tears. He says, man, I've never heard anything like that before. And um, he's like, that's pretty cool. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to die. All right. And so, so I'm sitting up straight in the chair. And then the guy who's selling cable, he says, hey, everyone, that's my pastor. I'm like, your pastor, you didn't even believe in God two days ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> It's no lie. The two kids that they had just inherited, when they realized who I was, they ran up and jumped in my lap and called me Uncle Jim. <laughs> Guys, what's going on here? Here's what Proverbs 25 says in the Passion Translation. It says, your surprising generosity awakens the conscience of an unbeliever. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not saying that money can buy ultimate happiness or joy or salvation, but I tell you what, it can spread the gospel. It can feed the poor. It can plant churches and hospitals and dig wells overseas. It can rescue girls out of human trafficking. It can shelter the homeless. And it can pay for the funeral of a prostitute of a family that can't afford it. Guys, it should be obvious. I think I already said this. You cannot go into all the world to disciple nations if you can't afford to go to the store. God wants you blessed for a purpose.